At what speed was the train traveling on a trip when it had completed half the total distance of the trip? So before we go on to the statements, let's think about this prompt question a little more. This is asking something very interesting. At what speed was the train traveling at that exact moment when it was exactly halfway through its trip? Well, normally GMAT questions ask us about average speed, and average speed is relatively easy to calculate. But here, what the question is asking for is the speed at a particular moment. In physics, this is something known as instantaneous speed. Now, instantaneous speed, it's easy enough to measure. Anytime you look down at your speedometer in your car, you're seeing the instantaneous speed of that moment. But if you wanted to mathematically calculate instantaneous speed, you'd need calculus. You'd need some form of math that is well beyond what you're expected to know for the GMAT. And so here, it's going to be really unclear what kind of information they might be able to give you that would allow you, using GMAT math, to figure out what the instantaneous speed is. So we really have to be aware of the difference here between instantaneous speed and average speed, because those two are very different. Statement number one tells us that the car travels 460 miles in four hours. Well, what that allows us to calculate exactly is an average speed. Total distance over total time is average speed. But if you know the average speed of a trip, that tells you nothing about the instantaneous speed at any particular moment. For example, if I drive 100 miles in two hours, I have an average speed of 50 miles an hour. But that does not mean that my speedometer was locked at 50 miles an hour the entire trip. Obviously, there'd be times I'd be on local roads, I'd be going slower, I'd even be stopped at stoplights at some point, in which case my instantaneous velocity would be zero. Other times I'd be on the highway, maybe going 70 miles an hour, and so I'd have a much faster instantaneous velocity. So there's no way to know just from the fact that the average velocity is 50, what the instantaneous velocity will be at a particular given instant. And so knowing the average speed is basically useless, completely insufficient. Well, then statement number two tells us the train travels at an average rate of 115 miles per hour on the trip. So basically, they recycle the information from statement number one, and they give it to us in statement number two. They actually do the calculation for us. The average speed is 115 miles an hour. So this is a rare instance where statement number two really does not contain new information it contains the exact same information that was in statement number one, just recycled. So again, this is insufficient. And even when we combine them, well, we're putting the same information together twice. So not surprisingly, that's still insufficient. Average speed is not enough to give us any, any inkling about what the value of instantaneous speed would be at a given moment. So the answer is E.